So we're gonna take a look at some derivatives of exponentials. And in this particular video, I wanted to focus on things that are base E. So we're not dealing with that extra little nugget that we talked about in class. Um, just, I'm gonna to try to keep this one fairly short. So I wanted to start by just reminding you that uh, when you're dealing with uh, a derivative of an exponential, recall that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But if you think about that, when you are looking at something like e to the, I don't know, something like say 5x plus two, what you're thinking about is that f of x would be e to the x, and g of x is the composite f of, of 5x today plus 2, and we are now looking at f of g of x, right? Because if you replace this x with 5x plus 2, that's what we're dealing with. So secondarily, you want to remember that if you take the derivative of a composite function, we take the derivative of the outer function, leaving the interior portion alone, times the derivative of the inside piece. So if that is the case, the derivative of the outside function, say e to the x, would be e to the x, but of course, it's not e to the x, it's e to the g, which is 5x plus 2, times the derivative of that interior function, which of course is 5. So that's just remember that little piece. So what we're going to do is a couple of simple questions. I'm going to start with this guy right here. So imagine g of x is e raised to the x squared minus sine x. Shouldn't be a very difficult problem because the derivative of e to the, any power is just that same exact value. So g prime would just be e to the x squared minus sine x times the derivative of that composite piece, which would be 2x. And of course, the derivative of negative sine would be negative cosine, and, and we're done. We've done everything we can. Now, I didn't feel like that problem was too terribly difficult, but if we wanted to, we could try something. And uh, like, like we, we did in class, we could say, let's take a look at um, <clears throat> this problem that we have, which is e raised to the x squared. Um, let me put a parenthesis around this. I remember the TI is a little finicky about this. Minus the sine X. <clears throat> okay. And we could try maybe doing a numerical derivative at some random value. Like I said, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do a numerical derivative of my function Y1. And let's find out what the derivative is at some random value like Five. Now, it's a pretty large number because e to the fifth power would be huge. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that different. Let's go down to two, a little more reasonable. So then the question is, if I did this problem right here, is this the same thing? So again, I'm going to replace it with two. So what I would have is two squared minus the sine of two. And then I'm going to multiply that by four because two times two is four minus the cosine of two. And hopefully, I'm going to get the same number that I had before. So again, just picking the random value sometimes can be helpful to confirm that we did OK. Now, my second question, we're only going to have a couple in this one because I don't really think it's that bad of a topic. h of x is equal to x squared times e to the x. Now, this is a product. We did one fairly simple to this in class. But it's a nice thing that has to do with when you're dealing with specifically exponentials with an e in it. So h prime, if we think of this as f and g, it's f prime times g plus g prime times f. Because keep in mind the derivative of x squared is 2x, leave g alone. Then we take the derivative of e to the x, which is, of course, e to the x times the other. And what I like to do is I like to factor this out and make it something like 2x plus x squared because I can see they both have that thing in common. So if I wanted to, I could now ask for h double prime, also known as d squared y dx squared, right? So if I was going to do the derivative of that derivative, I could do f prime g. <clears throat> so f prime g plus g prime, derivative of this would be two plus x, uh, two plus two x, 
So F prime G plus G prime F. And again, I notice that all of these things have an E to the X in common. I would have an X squared in this one. Both of these E to the X's, I had two X's. So I had a total of four X's and I had two. So H double prime was a fairly benign question. Now my follow-up to this question was about horizontal tangents. So keep in mind a horizontal tangent is where the derivative is equal to zero. So if we were to consider where would e to the x times x squared plus two x, I just like to put it in a slightly different order than how I originally wrote this. If I wanted to look at that, I already know the only way a product can be zero is if either piece is zero. So I need to consider when is e to the x zero, and I need to consider where x squared plus two x is zero. Well, first and foremost, this is impossible. This never happens because e to the x is asymptotic with zero. It doesn't ever reach. But this other guy is not so bad because if we factored it, there we have that story right here. So it appears that that would be zero at zero and at negative two. So, you know, double checking some little logical things on our calculator, we could come in and check out x squared times e raised to the x. Uh, one thing that it's nice to do sometimes is take a look at the graph. This thing is supposed to have two horizontal tangents and I can see one right there and one right there. And it may not be as clear as we'd like. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in on this thing to make it a little bit more obvious what's happening. So I'm gonna make a box. Oops, I did not do that right. I'm gonna do a zoom box right around this region where I see a little action happen. This is one of my favorite kind of zooms because I'm gonna zoom in on that portion of the graph. And so notice that I have one place where it looks like a horizontal here and one right here. Or the other thing that we could do is we could go back and look back at that numerical derivative and we could ask the calculator to go find that numerical derivative at zero. And notice that is one times 10 to the minus six, which is very, very close to zero. And we could also ask what happens at negative two, which again, scientific notation, very close to zero. So again, you'll notice that I didn't actually go type that in. I use the fact that every time you hit a second and an enter, it's gonna go back a couple of lines. So I'm gonna hit second enter a couple of times. And what my calculator is gonna do is remember each of the last questions that I asked. And so since I was asking about a derivative of y1, I could just recall that operation and it would do it for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at one other thing. And, uh, and that was going to be, let's figure out something about the equation of the normal line. At x equals one. Now I want to do that one very, very specifically because keep in mind to do a line, be it a tangent line or a normal line, then what I want to know is I, I, I need a point and I need a slope. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original function to find the point. So if I plugged in one into my original function, one squared is one, e to the one is e. So the point when I plug in one was one times e, which is decidedly e. So in my normal line, when I plugged in one, the answer was e, but then I can also look at the actual derivative that I have, and let's go ahead and plug in one into that. So the question is, what is f prime at? So if I plugged in one into the derivative right here, I would get e, because e to the one is e. And if I plug in one here, I'd get two plus one, which is three. So it appears that the slope of my normal line is e times three, or three e. And a normal line is an opposite and a reciprocal slope. And we're done with that problem. And I just had one to go because I wanted to look at one problem that, uh, you know, I don't know, might be considered a little bit more difficult. So here's my problem number three, and this will finish up our video for today. 
e raised to the 2xy plus x squared minus y squared is 10. Now, this is actually the same problem we went through in class, but I, I, I noticed that I thought that it was probably, for a lot of people, a little bit challenging, and it was also at the end of the lesson, so a little bit difficult for people to pay attention to. So keep in mind that when you take the derivative of e to the u, you get e to the u times u prime. So we'll start with that. The derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2xy, okay? But I need to now multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And so when I look at the derivative of the exponent, I'm going to think of that as a product. The derivative of the first, so f prime g plus g prime f. And then over here, it gets a little bit easier. And of course, the derivative of 10 is 0. Now, I did think a little bit about whether it would be worthwhile to do some of those substitutions like I did earlier in class, but I did decide that that was probably not the wisest thing to do. So I just decided to distribute this out a little bit because if I could distribute this out, it's gonna leave me in a situation where I can group together every one of these terms like right here and right here that happen to have a dy dx in it. So my dy dx's are part of the 2e to the 2xy camp, and they're part of the 2y camp. But these other two pieces, the 2x and the 2y e to the 2xy, those have absolutely nothing to do with dy dx. And so the only thing left to do to isolate dy dx is to divide, okay? So not an easy problem, not one that I actually have the ability to show you how to check on your calculator because the calculator cannot handle these problems that are mixtures of X's and Y's. It can't do that. Desmos can, but our calculator is not quite capable. Uh, the only thing that we could do, like I said in class, is if we took e to the 2xy and go back to the original problem, we could rearrange it a little bit and see if maybe substituting this piece right here into this hole and this hole might make it a little bit nicer, but I'm not really certain that anything particularly nice is gonna happen. And so I just didn't feel like it was probably an exercise that was going to be beneficial to people as they're trying to study and get better. So hopefully that's all right. The next video will be fairly short. I just wanna deal with things that are not base E. We'll see you back in class.